Hello, my name is Jim Ward, and I am a PDM support specialist with Go Engineer. In this particular video, I will be going over how to use the SSMS Query Designer. Most of the time, I deal with SOLIDWORKS PDM and ways to better use SOLIDWORKS PDM. So why is the Query Designer of interest to someone who is, say, the PDM administrator? Well, part of the power of SOLIDWORKS PDM is that it stores a lot of information in SQL. Normally, the complete search tool in PDM uh, does handle most search requirements. However, sometimes uh, information is needed that cannot be retrieved using complete search. When that happens, you need to create a custom SQL query to get that information. Now, the SQL Query Designer can be helpful in creating that custom query. What is the SSMS Query Designer. Well, for those who are not aware, SSMS does stand for SQL Server Management Studio. So this is a query designer that we do use inside of Management Studio. And the query designer is a visual tool to help create SQL queries. Many database administrators are visual, and so it, it's helpful to have a visual tool to help them create the queries. So you use this tool to create the main body of the query, and this tool can be used to help create select statements, which is uh, the main thing that we recommend you use it for in querying PDM, to pull information out of PDM. But you can, it can be used to also create insert, update, and delete statements. For more information on the SSMS uh, Query Designer, you can visit this particular location that is a Microsoft Docs so it's docs.microsoft.com, and then you can look at the rest of this. I will see if we can get a, uh, a link to that down below the body of this. Now, in today's demonstration, I will be creating a query to determine what files were deleted between the specified times and who deleted them. I will use variables, and I'll create those variables before I start the query designer. This way, we can reference the variables within the tool. Here we are in SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to start by creating a query, and I'll do that by going to the database of interest, doing a right click, and saying New Query. The reason I want to go to the database I'm interested in to create the query is because then it automatically selects the appropriate database up top. If I don't do that, then you have to come up here, select this, and choose the database you want to run the query against. Now, I did say with that I will be using some variables. Now, I've already got those uh, created, or I should say the, uh, the format for that has been saved off to the side. I'm just going to copy and paste that here. You can look on the internet for how to create variables for SQL. So we do a declare statement, uh, tell it what type, and then I, I set the values for the different variables. Notice the variables start with an at symbol. And then again, this is the one down here for the, the person of interest. So we have the start time, the end time, and the person of interest. And I put a little notes off to the side as to what those are for. Or to start the design query, I can do this in a couple of ways. Now that I have this query here, notice there is a query menu that comes starts up here. When in the query menu, I can come down here and choose design query in editor. I can also just do a right click down here in the query and actually get the same menu. So I'll choose design query in editor. Now when it comes up, the first thing that it wants me to do is to add tables. You don't have to add the tables right now. You can just close this dialog. I'm going to do that now to kind of show you the basic area of the query designer. When you select tables, they show up up here in this top section along with their links. And then you use this middle section, what you want in your query, what you're going to reference, and what you're going to show. And this, this area down here shows the same query dialog that you'll see if you were, say, to write it in over here. And when you're done, this what's down here is pasted, actually, in the query that you're working on. Now, I did cancel that table selection a moment ago, but I can always do a right click here and come down and choose Add Table. So I'll do that now. And when you choose tables, you need to, uh, if you're doing more than one table, you do need to hold the uh, control key, or it will, you'll only get one table at a time. So let's see, to begin with, we do need documents. 
Now, if you already have something selected and you press uh, D, it'll take you down to the Ds. So that's kind of a quick shortcut to get you down to the Documents area. I just click on Documents. Now, I also want the History Delete table. Press down Control key, select History Delete, and then I also want the Users table. That's way down here at the bottom. Press down Control key, select Users, and select Add. Notice when I do that, let me close the Add Table dialog. Then the tables do show up here in the top section, and they automatically have links in them. Now these check boxes that you see here help to determine if you want it to uh, show up, then you can click here, and that will put it in the query output. The lines indicate where the the tables are linked. So document ID and documents is linked to document ID and history delete. If you want to see the text, just pause your cursor here and it tells you that it's creating an inner join documents dot dot on documents dot ID equals history delete dot document ID. Now I do have an issue down here because it's using the user ID from documents to the users and that's not really the link that I am looking for. The way to change links on this is you do have to remove the existing link. And then you click on, on user ID and go down to this user ID. And then it creates that link. And you can, again, move the tables around to make the links more legible. So now that I have my tables, let me see what it is I'm interested in. And by the way, notice that as I added the tables, the text got automatically added down below. So let's see, I do want uh, the file name from the documents. The history delete, um, I don't necessarily need anything from there, from that table, but it does act as a link because from users, I do want the username. Now let's see, what else would I be interested in? Well, let's see, I want the file name, but I, I also want the, the folder that the file sits in. And that's not any of these tables. So I need to right click over here and again, add table. And in PDM, the folders are called projects. So let's come down here to the projects and add that table. Then again, close. As you can see, now I added the projects table. And it's there on project ID, but notice it links it by default to the lock project on documents. Well, unless a file is checked out, there is no lock project. And so that's not really what we're interested in. So I need to delete again this particular join. I can select it and choose delete key from my keyboard. And really what I want is the project ID from the history delete down here to project ID on the projects table. And let's see, maybe I can rearrange these a little bit. So they're so now on the projects, I don't want the just the folder that it sits in. What I want is the actual path. So let me scroll down here and you see here is the path. So that's great. So now we've chosen which uh, what output we want. We want the path, we want the username, we want the file name. Maybe we want the time, don't we? So in this case, we go to the history delete, and we want the time that the file was deleted. If you look at the select statement down here, you'll see the same thing, that we have the, the file name, the, the username, projects, path, and the history delete, and time. Let's work in the central area. So again, we have the column that we're pulling it from, file name, username, path, and time. The alias, if you would rather not have these this column be the output column heading, you can put in a different column heading over here. As an example, if I wanted to say deleted file in the output, I can put that here and that will change the output to be deleted file. And on username, I could say who deleted it and you can continue down and add new aliases for, to whatever you like. So this would be um, when deleted. So now over here, if we do, how do we want this sorted? Well, I think what we want is the We'll sort by time first. 
and we'll sort ascending. If you want it to have the most recent first, then you would sort descending. And then the sort order, so if you are sorting on multiple items, you can decide which one you want to go first. So descending, we're going to sort by time first, and then username, and I'll choose ascending there so it goes alphabetical. Hmm, you know what, maybe I want to sort by person first, and then switch over to the time that it was deleted. Now if you notice down here, that has created an order by clause. Order by who deleted it first and then when deleted. And, and when deleted is descending. So now we need to decide on the filter. We can decide that we want the time when it was deleted to be between. And now I can use the variable. And it recognizes, since I already put those variables in, They are recognized and I can use them. Now also I want to de uh, determine maybe um, who used it. So I can also filter on username. So I can say, and now on usernames, if you use like rather than equals, that gives you um, a bit more flexibility in what you specify. So I do have a variable for username here as well. So I'll choose at so again, the where clause says history time between time one and time two and users.username like at name. That's great. So now I can just say we have a nice graphical representation of what we're doing. We've decided what columns we are um, putting out. We've given them aliases to make it more uh, legible for us when we look at it. And we have put in some filters so as to what we're interested in. And, and, it has, and the query designer has put in the actual text for us down below. I'll say OK. Oh, yes. You always have to notice that wherever your cursor is, is where it, it puts this statement in. So my cursor happened to have been there right after name. That's where it started the select statement. So let me click it there and put in a couple of enters. And now we can see the completed query. So I can do an execute and notice the name here. This is um, sorting for a particular person and choose execute. And you can see then that it pulls up anything that was deleted by this particular person that would like to have their full name. So let me select all of these guys here. And then once again, I can choose query designer. Pulls up everything that we have already done here in the graphical interface. Now in the users, I wanted to add full name. I'll tell this OK and then run the query again. And you see now full name gets added down here at the end. If you want to change the order, you can uh, change it here. There's a file name, users.username, and then let me come over here, copy it from there, and paste it here. I run the query again, and then that changes uh, the order of how they are presented down here. Now, since we are searching on when deleted, maybe we want that to be first. So let me grab that here and run the query again, execute. That's great. So when deleted, the what was deleted, who deleted it, and the full name and the path to the file. Now, again, this is just for a particular uh, person. If you want this for everybody, you can just leave a percent in here, which is a wild card. Everybody will meet this criteria. So now if I choose execute, it lists everybody who deleted something between those times. And that is how you uh, use the Query Designer to help you create queries in Microsoft SQL's Management Studio. That completes the demonstration of using the Query Designer in SQL Management Studio. This has been Jim Ward from Go Engineer. Thank you for watching.